never been a host before, so it's okay. Part of me. This is my first time. Uh, yeah. Going live in, like in person. So oh. it's, it's a lot of firsts. <laughs> Okay, I think we're on. Okay. Hi everyone. So this is Aureal Studios first live streaming session. And today we're going to have a costume live drawing for the Halloween. And um, I'm very happy to introduce a special guest for us this evening. Um, our instructor, one of our instructor and our prior students as well, Gary. Yes, hello, nice to meet everyone here. Well, oh, I believe a lot of you might know Gary already. Uh, if you've seen his work, they're spectacular. And that's why we invited him today to show you some demos on his, I would say, special technique on <laughs> doing live drawings, right? As, you know, Aureo Studio believes, you know, Life drawing is always going to be one of the most important attributes to studying in animation, especially this program. So I would say it's a very good opportunity for all of the students today to learn from Gary. And yeah, so we'll, we're going to do some uh, just a casual drawing t to begin with. And then later on, maybe we'll get some questions for Gary. Maybe we can talk. Uh, about you know his experience in animation and everything that's interesting that might be you know um, you're interested in as well so yeah yeah maybe we'll so start much. with some drawings okay right. and yeah feel free to draw along um, we have the mod So we're gonna, s yeah. I'm gonna start counting down with a timer so we can start with a three minute pose, perhaps. Okay, yeah, sounds good. good. Three minute pose. Okay, starting. Now. Starting now. Round one.
Round 2 Round 3 
Round 4 Oh, sorry for a little bit of a technical error. Just fixed it. Should should be working now. Okay. okay. Right. Do you mind if we get on to some of the questions? Yeah. So um, I've gathered a few questions that you know some of the students and you know including myself. I think it will be really helpful for new students that are interested in applying for animation in particular or just drawing in general. I think that would be really useful if you can share some experience with us. That would be great. Uh, I guess we could do this while we're drawing at the same time. Okay. Um, so starting with the first one, what's the best way to hold a pencil or a contact when drawing? Well, I guess we're not using a contact yeah, today. Using pen. Usually yeah. when you're holding contact, you would hold the like this with your thumb and right. then that way you could utilize your entire arm. Right. So one of the key things that I also mentions quite often to the students when you're drawing live drawing is, you know, when you're drawing in a large format like this is try to use your arm a little bit more. Right. I think a lot of people um, are used to just drawing with their hand and their finger and that really limits the scale and the dynamic of their drawings. Right. So. Sure. Yeah, I think if you look at Gary's drawing, you can see a lot of broad lines that goes through an entire shape or entire part of the torso, for example, that tends to uh, capture the pose in a more general sense in the beginning, right? a little bit quicker in the beginning. Right. Good question. And another question, second question. I think this one is really is a really big topic. How important do you think life drawing is uh, um, for animation, I would for say making animation? It is probably the most important part. Um, you'll see people, uh, even once you get into the industry, it, it's something you just practice nonstop. Um, even once you think you mastered it, it's, it's just something, it's like eating for artists pretty much. It's where we get all our nutrients, um, as cringy as that may sound, but um, once you like have better figure drawing, it'll pretty much help with Round everything five. that you do. Definitely. Um, even layouts would somehow like it will help with the line quality. So I would say it's pretty essential. Yeah. Great questions as well. Um, another question. I think this question is kind of interesting because it relates to a lot of current animation students or just students in general. Uh, so it is, do you think it's better to draw a live drawing model from observation compared to using pictures? Um, definitely observation is a lot better. Right. Um, you will be able to practice anatomy with photos, but something that you won't be able to get is sometimes you will miss the, the life kind of quality from uh, real life and also the perspective. Um, especially how like the feet is placed on the floor, that will change a lot. Um, but once you uh, do do it from life more often, you'll be able to find um, and kind of build up that perspective for the figure drawing. Totally. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's it it does have some limitation to a lot of people these days, especially during the pandemic, right? I would say in schools, uh, especially you know. A year before, a lot of schools still don't provide uh, live models. Is right, Sheridan providing yeah. live models right now? Right now they are, but okay. during the pandemic, we also had to drop from photos too. I see. Yeah, and it must feel very different, right? Yeah, um, which is why it, even if you can't draw from uh, a live model, uh, go outside and draw from real life. Um, people on the streets or in the coffee uh, coffee shop, right? Like anything that helps practice from life would also apply. Okay. Yeah. Great, thanks. And 
just when I look at your drawing, I see that you tend to start with the head a lot. I think it's also my personal habit to starting with the head. But a common question that I got a lot from our students is that, is there a specific order that you should follow when you're doing a life drawing? For example, you know, starting with the head or starting with the torso. When I work from Conte, I actually usually start to start from the torso. Right. Um, it's because I like to. I want to try drawing the wolf a bit, so that's why I'm starting from the head. Right. But in the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, for people who struggle with head proportions, I usually do it last. That way, you can build up the entire figure and then find the head. Right. Um, I know uh, people who start from arms, from elbows, and usually um, it depends on the pose. Like sometimes I would start from the feet if it's foreshortened. Or let's say I would start from the elbow if it's something that protrudes out more. Um, I'd say it's more of like a feel, but in most cases, um, usually your approach usually uh, depends on what you struggle with, right? So. All right. Yeah. Good. So I think we could take a little bit of a short break. Okay, yeah. um, so maybe we could, you know, keep working on some of these drawings just. If you want to finalize yeah, it sure. a little we bit more to, to add a little bit of detail, okay. right? We can have the model have a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, we can keep going with the questions. Okay. Yeah. So as we mentioned, you know, starting order doesn't really matter, right? So everyone has their own habit of starting from a specific location when they're doing the life drawing. I would say when you're learning. Generally, starting with a torso is a better idea. Yeah, I would say it's most consistent. Yeah, most consistent just to keep everything in a consistent proportion. But, you know, you can develop your own habit. If it helps you to drop quickly, more accurately, starting with the head is okay, starting with the feet is okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is still to draw as um, accurately as you can, as dynamic as you can. Right, right? for sure. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next question. How how can you make your drawing more expressive and dynamic? Um, in terms of figure drawing? Yeah, in just, terms of figure drawing. Uh, for dynamic, it's usually with the pose. So, for example, the line of action is something that you could definitely push. Um, for sure. Expressions, uh, then I would just say exaggerating facial expressions. For example, with the mask, um, the wolf doesn't really have any expressions, so right. you can come up with expressions. Um, mm -hmm. This comes from character design and character sheets. Um, also, I would just say try and feel what the character is trying to do, right? Like uh, when, you, when you're doing figure drawing, especially costume figure drawing, they're acting on the stage, so they pretty much their pose should tell a story. So you should use that story and help push what the model's trying to show. So uh -huh. that's something I would probably look at. I think we can kind of see it from Gare's drawing right now, right? You can almost imagine that there's a story to this character, right? I feel like he's, you know, he's a little bit goofy. He's not the yeah. traditional guess. sense of werewolf. He's not the <laughs> scary kind, which yeah, is okay, so right? You can turn a character uh, into anything, basically. You know, adding your own background stories, use your imagination, right? right? Just don't make it boring, I would say. Um, Think about what, what, what kind of interesting backstory this character can have. What kind of emotion is, what he's going through, right? Emotion always adds to the expression a lot. Okay, and another thing that I want to say, maybe it's like about time as well. What do you think? Like compared to a longer pose to a shorter pose, I feel like for me. Um, Drawing shorter posts tend to just help me train the sense of drawing dynamically a little bit more. For just sure. because you have less time to, to go for the detail, you have to force yourself into just capture the pose and the movement a little right, bit more. For sure. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to do mainly short posing. I would say one to three minutes. Five minutes is considered long, longer poses. So right. that's where you start to build, I don't know, character if you want to add detail. Right. Um, when you have like costumes and clothes, for example, I think it's better to, to give it a little bit more time. Uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to build, uh, obviously you can build a silhouette in like short posing. Right. Um, I honestly got carried away with the face uh, in most of these, so I didn't really draw the body, but in the next year I could try drawing the full body and then yeah. kind of seeing. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, one more question before we go back to All right. timing again. 
Um, what are some of the common mistakes that people make when they're doing uh, figure drawings? I think you can speak common it mistakes. in your experience as you know in the pro like right. what you see in the program right now or just your experience teaching some of the students you have right, right. now? I would say drawing what they know instead of what they see. Right. Um, obviously anatomy, uh, once you build up a certain knowledge of anatomy, you can start to like, let's say, like create, like let's say you don't like the posing of the model, you can change it up. But in most cases where we're still learning, I would say um, use the applied anatomy, but don't rely, it, rely on it fully. Also look at the model and really try to analyze what's going on. Um, I see a lot of people like they think what a face should look like, they'll just draw it, or they think the feet should look like this because they um, they did like, it so many times. It. Yeah, right? so they're not really like analyzing what what is in front of them. So right. I would definitely say before you put your pencil down, uh, make sure to look and see exactly what you want to do before you make a stroke. That way you'll draw quicker, you'll be more efficient, you'll make less mistakes. Absolutely, yeah. I think this is what I tend to tell my students a lot as well is really utilize the reference in front of you in this case you know we have the model um really fortunately right uh, right a lot of people don't really get the resource of drawing live models and when you have a model like this you know it's really important that you really observe the model right, right. because it's very different from drawing pictures right you get a sense of depth when you're looking at a real model you get a sense of movement because you know it's the model cannot be completely still Right? Exactly. So you also get a sense of movement and direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for the next few drawings, I think maybe we could... Sorry. It's okay. Extend the time a little bit longer so we could try to finish the whole drawing. Yeah, we could try a five minute. Yeah. yeah. And then we could probably go back to like a few one minute, three minutes. Sure. Okay, yeah. let's do like maybe three five minute poses. Yeah, I think that would work. Yeah. Yeah. Now, round one. Okay. Okay, far up. So I would say um, if you have any further questions in the chat, maybe now is a pretty good opportunity to type, to comment, um, to ask. Maybe we could talk about it together as well. So we have one question right now. Let me just go back to it. Uh, so this question is from Crickix. Uh, she mentioned um, he or she. I'm not sure, but do you have any? Do you do any construction lines when you do figure drawing? Um, as uh, usually, I would say getting the torso. Like for example, uh, you could follow the bean, or you could do the rib cage and the pelvis. You could uh, simplify those into like like a box or some sort of. But like. Um, I guess that would be the construction line. You can also find the line of action or simplify the leg into like a straight line uh, just to find where the feet is. Um, but as obviously when I'm working in pen, you can't really do much construction line, but usually I would say um, those are the main things I would look at when I'm working on uh, content. Yeah. Really digging the expression on this one. Right? Looks a little bit more mean now. Another audience question from Abby. 
and she mentions do you recommend any life drawing reference books yes um, there's a few I'd say Michael Hampton's uh, figure drawing book is great Michael Hampton yes and then obviously you guys probably heard of the force by Michael Matesi that's also a really good book yes you can take a look at it. yeah Michael Hampton and Michael Matesi be sure to check it out really helpful as I think we might even have them in the back let me take a look if I can find them um, yeah I think we have the Michael Matesi one, but I do have the Michael Hampton one right here. As you can see, figure drawing by Michael Hampton. This is really helpful. I think um, it takes a lot of time to definitely study everything here. Um, but Round I would say two. the best thing about this book is that it tells you specific mindsets and way of thinking kind of how you see anatomy what kind of form how you can simplify everything as you can see here right simple body forms with um, geometries right helps you understand the perspective and uh, human structure yes he really does simplify it very well it's almost like he engineered he found a, found a way to like engineer and simplify each uh, component of the body very structuredly and very efficiently. Yeah. So, and when uh, we're learning figure drawing in Sheridan right now, um, the, like this type of simplification is the way the teachers teach us to look at the human body through cylinders, um, through forms and shapes like that. Absolutely. So, if you want to get better at it, get yourself a copy of this. We actually have two. You wow. can also find it online for free for the PDF. Yeah. Uh, if you don't want to have the hard copy. Yeah. But I still recommend if you buy one, you know, yes. just to support the artist, for sure. support the cause. Right. Any, any more audience questions? Amanda is um, also in Sheridan. She's oh, in my class. I see. Yes. Oh, thank you for tuning in, Amanda. Maybe you, you know, we yeah. could invite her in the All future. All right. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, come along and, and draw here. Yeah. So, let us know if you're interested in coming here. I'm sure she would be. Yeah. Right, Amanda. Kidding. <laughs> This pose really speaks a lot about the character. Oh, I drew the head too small. Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. Ah, this is why working in pen is good because you mess up and then you mess up. You can't really do anything. Yeah, about it. absolutely. Yes. I say brush pen is definitely one of my favorite tools to use as well, mm -hmm. just because um, the amount of learning experience you get out of it. Let's yeah. See if we can try and fix it.
Okay, he's rocking glasses now. Round three. Oops. I guess one more question from myself. Okay. Do you have any tips on drawing cloth or just draperies in uh, general? Yeah, cloth and draperies are hard. Um, I would say look at the material of the cloth. Um, some of the cloths will be a lot more loose and the folds will be bigger. Some are tighter, like leather. Um, also look at, uh, I don't know. Personally, I'm also learning how to draw cloth, so I can't really give much, but I, I can tell like, usually just look at places where cloth would bend and fold around joints. Right. And um, where there's weight, um, usually those areas are good to look at. I see. Yeah. Yeah, very good tips. Another question I think that will be really helpful is um, looking at your page. Um, you do a lot of character design yourself as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, would would you say character design is one of your favorite subject within animation? I would say it's something I'm the most familiar with. Familiar with, yeah. Right. So, what do you think that helps you design a you know awesome character? Sorry. 
like an awesome character like what's a what's a good character design to you and how do you approach character design i would say a good character design is something that i can tell what his personality is right off just just from looking at him mm -hmm. um not every character has to look flashy or cool sometimes as long as they communicate the character that uh, their personality well i right. feel like that's the number one goal as a character designer is to uh, your character should be able to like once i see him i should recognize him just right. because of the way you designed him right yeah. recognize so character uh, obviously is the most important for character design so his personality who he is um, there we go yeah yeah a lot of people tend to forget that character design is about character not about design <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Right? They tend to over-design the character too much. Yeah, sometimes a simple yeah. character needs simple designs, right? Yeah. And if you look at a lot of the iconic characters... Right, like Mickey they're, Mouse? Yeah, they're, they're really they're, simple. They're simple. Right? Yeah. And they're I easy to remember. Right. on to another question that I thought that's more related to us um, you know as a former all real studio student right yourself um, do you think it's helpful or crucial to study in a portfolio preparation class or is it better off you know preparing your own portfolio I feel like definitely having the guidance around you is very good especially people who are already at Sheridan, like students. Um, also, uh, I would say preparing for yourself um, is like, you'll need to put in more work. Mm -hmm. um, obviously at a studio like ours, um, you would also need to put in a lot of work, right? Because drawing just comes from practice no matter where you are. Um, but having the guidance to like, give you the right path will save a lot of time and uh, I would say it's definitely really helpful. And in continuation of that, and how does it feel to become a portfolio teacher now, a portfolio instructor now yourself? Like, uh, what is the number one thing you would teach to your student? Uh, I feel like um, definitely having, like, this is definitely a great opportunity for me as well um, because it's one thing learning it's another thing teaching right in mm -hmm. order to teach you also have to learn and you also learn a lot of stuff that you never realize uh, just by teaching right um, so I've definitely learned a lot as a teacher um, which is surprising because sometimes you think you knew it right but like once you start teaching it then you start mm -hmm. questioning yourself and uh, then you find like real like more different methods and approaches, right? So, right. I see that's good. Yeah, a lot of times I, I find the same struggle is like, we know how to do things ourselves, but when you're trying to teach other people to do the same thing, it requires a lot more digging into to the problem. Right, for right? sure. Yeah. Finding you know, the core of the technique yeah. or the ideology or the mindset and it's yeah. not just about like because you know as an experienced artist that has been drawing for many many years a lot of time skills are becoming habits mm -hmm. right it's it's part of your muscle memory right yeah but being a teacher really um allows you to dig into another level of how to draw basically yeah yeah okay Thing. Did, did we talked about what's the number one thing that you would teach your student? Like in terms of animation or? Yeah, so let's say I'm your new student, right? <laughs> okay. This is my first class and right. I'm like, I wanted to am, uh, apply to animation I shared. Right. Yeah. What, what, would you, what would you tell me as a first advice? Um, I would say, I would say the number one thing is like you're willing to draw, you're willing to put in the work, 
Um, I, it doesn't really matter what stage you are because we all start from different stages. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing in common that we all have to do is like the passion for the art, right? Like passion for the sport. Um, this is something that you're going to be doing once you get in, once you graduate. It's something you're just going to do your whole life, right? Because this is your money maker, this is your bread maker. So um, during the portfolio, if uh, I, I feel like it's really important to understand that um, you need to have like this enthusiasm, right? Absolutely. Uh, this passion towards it. And once you have this, uh, it's easy for us to teach you, right? Because you you want to learn, um, and we're more than right, like we're more than happy to give you whatever we have, right? So, yeah, I totally agree, hundred percent. Right, you have to love the medium, right? For sure. To really study it, right? Because you know when you love something, you you put all your time into it. Yeah. You look for ways, and you. You you will try to find inspirations everywhere, right? Right. Like a lot of people that I've met, that may you know, from my my experience, they did it end up finishing studying animation is because they don't have enough passion for it, right? right. Because yeah. animation can get really intensive. Animation is pretty intensive. It's um, pretty intensive. If so. you it, yeah, you pretty much draw every single day. So yeah. Uh, so if you don't like drawing, then <laughs> there might be a small problem with it. Yeah. Especially like you, you, when animation is not just about drawing as well. Well, not yeah, not yeah. only about it's, drawing. It's beyond drawing that. is like the fundamental. It's fundamental. something that you need to have, and then we build stuff on top of it. But yeah, yeah. so for sure. Okay. So for for the next few sets, yeah, yeah maybe we can minutes. shorten the pose a little bit. Yeah. Going back to three minutes. Okay, just. Wait for the no model no to get ready. Okay, so the following poses, let's go back to shorter pose. Okay, and then I'm gonna start with more viewer questions. Okay, so three minutes, I guess this time let's focus on um, capturing the, the movement a little bit more, yeah. right? Okay, starting in five. Round one. Okay, so we have another viewer's question. Okay, from Crickets again, wondering uh, who are some of your art inspirations? Uh, you know, any artists or concept places or even you know um ips i would say like inspirations for art um depends yeah. i have like a list a whole list um right. uh, for each category um character design i really like james wood James um, yes, uh, you can take a look. He has Instagram. He, I think he is a character designer at Pixar. Um, or he was at Disney um, before. Um, also, illustration, there's some classics. Uh, for pen, I like Henrich Cly. Um, Arthur Rackham has some great illustrations too. Um, concept art, I'm not quite uh, familiar. I know like some artists, I forgot their names, just off the spot. Um, in terms of... Uh, storyboards, I like uh, McKenna Jean Harris, uh, if I didn't butcher her name. Um, anyways, uh, there's also a lot. Uh, <laughs> I have like a whole list I can go off of. But like, I would say the main thing about an artist uh, having inspiration is to really just try and take a look at what they do good and trying to apply that to your own work. Um, I feel like that's probably the most efficient way to improve and learn. So definitely um, create a list and then um, have all, all of your favorite artists on there so you can take a look. Yeah. So try to gather inspiration from all the possible directions. For sure. Yeah. That's, you know, if you really look for it, there's millions, just infinite amount of reference you can get, right? Yeah. Like sometimes even from non-art related things, right? If you, you just take a walk and look down the street, you might get inspired by something, right? A composition, right? Looking at a street view, perhaps. Right, looking at a person gives you an idea for a story. Right? Inspiration can come from anywhere, really. Right? Yep, it it is pretty much everywhere if you yeah. can see it. But yeah, 
even music. I sometimes find inspiration from just music alone, right? So yeah. It's all art. Everything is art uh, if you if you can make it. <laughs> yeah. It's about capturing your emotion, about you know, expressing yourself mostly. Yes, exactly. Right. Right, will this be archived? Yes, I uh, I think once we're done with the stream, it will become a replay or playback. So feel free to watch this after right if you want to watch it again um let's see round two so if i think if most people are interested um we do we do want to host another live stream tomorrow night as well um same place so we're gonna probably start a little bit earlier at six tomorrow, so feel free to tune back in. Um, unfortunately, Gary's not gonna be here tomorrow again, but uh, tomorrow will be just a streaming of the model, okay? So if you wanted to draw yourself, um, definitely come back, tune in tomorrow at six, yeah, get some drawings done, uh, because um, let's talk about the giveaway. Okay, we will be doing a giveaway to three lucky winners. So it's gonna be a random draw. Okay, um, so tomorrow watch the stream and then make a drawing of your own based on the same model and then add us on Instagram. Uh, follow us for sure, follow Gary here as well. Be sure to follow Gary. Um, and just add us, uh, maybe you, you know, you could repost our pose if you want, put it on your story, but as long as you hashtag us and mention us with your drawing, you get a chance to enter for a random draw for these prints. So I have three prints here. Okay, so one right here, one right here. Oops. The other way around this way okay and one more this one so they're all gary's drawing okay very cool character design based on animals right i think these will go great on your wall um yeah gary's gonna sign them a little bit later so there will be signatures on here right by gary himself and yeah, just make sure you hashtag us. I think we will end this draw by Sunday night. Okay, so be sure to submit your drawing before Sunday, 12 a.m. Yeah, or zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the end of the day, midnight. Okay, so before Halloween starts, actual Halloween starts. Okay, so get a chance to to get to win this. Okay, it's gonna be completely random draw. So um, we're not gonna be judging anyone's artwork. Okay, so everyone has a chance to win. Okay, round three. I think um, it's more important just to to let you guys draw, right? Yes. We're we're not trying to compete here. So just. Do whatever you like in any style. You can use any medium you want. Okay. Um, yeah. So, got a chance to get these.
the way, how is life at Sheridan right now? We're getting, I feel like second year. Second year is like usually the the most learning, I'd, I'd say. Like you learn most of the software. Right. So it's the most tedious, but hopefully um, in third year and fourth year, it'll be more creative, like freedom. But right, right now, I'd say a lot of learning, a lot of s- new stuff to touch, which right. is good. Um, but it sometimes gets like a bit overwhelming, but right. it's all right. Technical stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just technical, like three D. If, you, if you're into three D, you'll really love third oh. year because you'll have a lot of a lot of three D stuff to look at. Yeah. How do you feel about three D animation right now? Uh, I mean, I think most of your work is still in two D. Yeah. Right? Uh, I know, like a lot of my friends like three D, but oops, I'm not finished. Um, uh, but four. I would say it's 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 pretty much like. If you look at every single feature film these days, it's all done in three D, right? Yeah. So it's definitely the future, but um, that's where they're always. There's also like pre-production, right? And that's why I wanted to get into. That's where there's less three D components, more hand-drawn two D um, stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. Well, that's a great pose. Yes, this is my There's mental when I whenever I'm doing homework. <laughs> there we go. This is this is my pose. Yeah. My head. A sad right. werewolf. Yes. I can relate to this really, really well. I'm kidding. Life is great. <laughs> I mean, doing what you love isn't that like the best thing? Yeah, for right? sure. And of course, there will be struggles, for sure. As you know, animation is one of the most intensive <laughs> art-related program you can think of. You know? I say for sure. Um, personal pieces, uh, I'm guessing like the personal section. Um, I would say um, stuff that shows like whatever you have like passion or stuff that they can see that you're passionate about. Um, also, they really like observational drawings. Like every art school likes observational drawings, meaning sketchbooks, drawing outside, uh, real life models, people like that. All of that is great. Um, so. And then also like stuff that you like, right? Um, like if you're into concept art or viz dev or character creation, uh, definitely showcase that, right? Because that, that's something that you're passionate about. Because um, they can tell, right? I can. We can all tell once uh, something that you guys like to draw. Um, it kind of shines through your drawing, right? So um, I wouldn't get caught up too much into exactly what you need. Um, I would say it's good to have a bit of everything, but really just showcase what you like to do the most. Definitely. I think that's I think they name it personal work for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about yourself, your personality. Try to show yourself in those drawings. Yeah. Like with with the drawing test portion of the portfolio, stick to the rules as much as you can. Um, But for personal work, you know, make Make sure people can see it's it's your work. It's you that's doing all everything there, right? Make it unique to yourself. Um, tell me what kind of artist you are. Tell me what you want to express as right, an artist. Exactly. Yeah. Getting some great questions today. Round five. Yeah. Definitely don't feel shy to comment more while we're still going. So did you submit as your personal pieces? I was, I did submit more character design stuff. Um, I did a few owl designs. Um, also I did some, I also submitted a bit of, I think two traditional and a bit of sculptures because I did a lot of uh, traditional stuff before I did animation, but I wouldn't focus on that because this is an animation school, obviously. But um, and then besides that, also sketchbook, right? Because that's also really important. Yeah, we do actually have a video, I believe, uh, in our channel that showcases some of Gary's work uh, from your portfolio, actual portfolio when you were applying. Yeah, so maybe we can put the link in the chat later. Right, you guys can check it out, um, or just go to the channel. Right, look for the video. I believe it's somewhere, somewhere in there.
are thirsty. We'll have a drink right here. Thank you so much. Liking this pose so far. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I'm starting to loosen up. Yeah, I definitely. was a bit stiff in the beginning, but now that's usually in figure drawing it's like that. You start off stiff, and the more you draw, you get more used to the posing, and then you your lines will feel a bit yeah. better. For sure. It definitely takes some time to warm up. Yeah, usually I yeah I usually draw better like near the end uh, of each session yeah. when I whenever I do figure drawing. Yeah. So. That really shows how important practicing is to life drawing. Yeah. Right? For sure. Like, I've been doing it for so long, and then if I stop for like two weeks and I come back, my pose is becoming stiff. Yeah, it's definitely something that, yeah. like, if you don't practice consistently, your hands will kind of like lose a bit of the muscle memory. But for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's take a short break as well, get some water, stay hydrated. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> water, everyone drink water. This is something that I always forget, especially when you're yeah. working a lot. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you so much. We can have some ASMR can yeah. opening. Do you mind if I test out your pen a little? I think I could. Yeah. It looks like it has. So I use this one a lot. Uh, this one's out. This is the pen pal. This one can try it. I haven't tried the other one. Okay, hold on. Just for a second. I have to get the pen back in Oh, so it's. Yeah, it has like a small pump. Right. It's very unique. Yeah. It has a pump to it. So you press it down, it's kind of like pressing the ink. Mm -hmm. I see, very cool. So you can control the thickness, like if right. it's watery or if it's not watery. I'm just gonna do a bad imitation of your drawing. Mm -hmm. Feels really smooth. Yeah, um, definitely better than even, some of the ones I've used before. Yeah, usually you don't draw this paper, but uh, usually I would say like normal paper would probably be better, uh, right. better for this. But it's alright, the works too. Yeah. Just the amount, sheer amount of ink that's coming out of it—it's really crazy. Yeah, like have to control sometimes. Yeah, you gotta go really light. Yeah, just use the tip sometimes. Compared. Or if you need, you can scribble back. I think I might have put a bit too much ink. Right? Let it dry off a bit. I'm liking it so far. Like, if you want to do like a high contrast drawing, yeah, you can definitely like that has the shading. Yeah, that has a lot of like with her uh, with this leather jacket. I want if I had more time, I would probably gone into like the blacks of the jacket. Yeah. That would have been really cool. Yeah. That's awesome.
liking this a lot. You can really go quick because some of the brush pen that I've used in the back, if you go really quick, it kind of just dries up. Yeah. so far should get one of these too let me t if you're if you're interested it's um higgins black magic ink yes, they come with indian ink too if you like indian ink right yeah it feels really nice okay let me hand the seat back to you oh, no, no. <laughs> it's okay um okay um so we're going for shorter, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. So let me change the timer. Go for one minute? One minute one, one minute pose. Okay. So for one minute pose, as we mentioned before, it's about dynamic mostly, right? We're not gonna so do any detail. Just the pose itself. Okay. Let's start in five. Oops, sorry. That's okay. Take that away. Round one. One minute can get really. I, I wasn't used yeah. to the ten because I was we were doing longer ones. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to. of the new students that are getting into live drawing, I would say spend most of your time practicing short poses would be a good idea. Right, for sure. Yeah, just because, you know, it's it's the most challenging thing for live drawing is just to uh, finish the pose within the time because you know, for longer poses, you can just get more time Round to draw three. the details essentially. Right, right? Yeah. a lot of people, Tell me that you know when you get a five minute pose, you don't know what to do because they're, they're used to drawing short poses, um, which kind of translates to if you're good at doing short poses, your long pose is going to be, you know, most likely be fine, right? You just add more to it. Um, so, yeah, short poses really crucial.
Round four. Do you mind sharing a little bit of a career plan for your uh, yourself down the future? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, if you don't mind, of no course. Uh, I yeah. I want to be a story artist, right? Someday. Storyboard. So yeah, storyboard yeah. story artist. Um, oh. So if I can Round five. target that, that I would say, and then maybe one day, like this is me dreaming, but like director. Uh, it's not too far fetched. Yeah. One day, like, I would say that'd be pretty cool. Yes, we were trying to follow a lot of your instructor back then when you were studying with us. Yes, for sure. Yeah, like yeah. Jerry Wong. Yes, he's Jerry a, Wong's a story artist. Yeah. Emily was Emily a storyboard also artist. A story. Yeah, I think it's yeah. rubbed off a bit on me. Yeah, I, I mean, it's. Yeah. Your work is definitely has the influence from them, so. Yeah, I, I would say. It's not. It's not. You know a. A wild guess that you know you might be interested in a storyboard as well. Yeah, but storyboard, I would say it, it's kind of like a final test for animators because you have to be good at everything pretty, pretty much. much. It's like yeah. it's pretty much animation and and every other fundamental combined together. Yeah, so not only you have to. It's like figure drawing, character design, acting, layout, environment, round notes. six. Yeah, yeah, everything. I say it's the ultimate test of whether you're a good animator or not. Sure. I mean, it's go it's okay if you enjoy other things. Right? I know plenty of my friends and also you know your, your friends probably that enjoys character more, enjoys layout more. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why we have all of these different fields you can get into, right? Yeah. I so. think that's the the, the wonderful wonderful thing about the industry. Like, it's not that you know. It's not a one-man job. Exactly. Right? You have to work with other people. Unless you're Miyazaki from Ghibli. <laughs> oh, well, do definitely. your boards, you do your animation, you do your layouts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then most yeah. most cases it isn't. Yeah. yeah. It does hurt to be a perfectionist like that. Yeah. Right? But I mean, the the result of it is amazing, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Round seven. Let's say if we do invite uh, another guest next time. Yes. Is there any instructors from us that you know that maybe you want to see? Um, will you invite here? Like currently in teaching or yeah, well, any before? any any teacher or in, any doesn't teacher. matter if it's from before or now. Uh, we'll try our best. I feel like any could... instructor would be great. Uh, yeah. yeah, anyone would be great uh, because everyone here is so qualified, right? Um, I would say uh, obviously my old teachers that taught me. I would love to see them also doing a demo. Yeah. But I know some of them aren't teaching anymore. So um, and then. Also, like I also heard like round eight. Um, I don't really quite know all the instructions here. I because right. I I go I uh, teach in the Oakville area. Well, you do know Nathan, of course. Yes, Nathan's great. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll have Nathan do the next yes, one. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Any of your friends? From from class, you might wanted to give a shout yeah, out I to. Can, I can ask them if yeah. they want for sure. Yeah. Yeah.
Round nine. Yeah, I see mentioning of Emily from the chat. Ah, oh, yeah, she yeah. she. We will try. She's pretty famous. It'd be really difficult, but we will try our best. <laughs> She's very busy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think she, well, a lot of people didn't know Emily actually went, went to our studio's class as well when she was preparing her portfolio. Yeah. I think Jerry taught her as well. Yeah. Weren't you guys Round from the 10. same place? Yeah, I saw her in Calgary before. Oh, oh wait, yeah. I probably shouldn't mention the location. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. You guys never heard that, right? You guys, you guys didn't hear that. Oh, it's a big place, so yeah. just ignore that. Yeah. Yeah. She's in Canada. Canada. There you go. There you go. So you mentioned you wanted to become a storyboard artist. Is there any particular studio or uh, a company that uh, that you really want to get into? I would say any of the big studios are good, just yeah. to start off. Right. Um, Mostly the ones from in the States, I right? Say, yeah, the States. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty much where all the opportunity is. Yeah. I mean, mostly places. they have a, I would say the, the best thing is that they have a rather um, sophisticated or developed system. They have a good pipeline there. Yeah, yeah. good pipeline. And yeah, they've been doing it for so many years. Round 11. Yeah. How's the time looking? Uh, we still have, I would say, around 10 minutes okay, for everything. We could, uh, we could end a little bit earlier. We could end it actually with like a few uh, 30 seconds, actually. Oh, yeah. Just for fun. That'd be great. Maybe we could demonstrate a little bit of line act, line of action. I think yeah. a lot of new students tends to, to to get confused by the line of action. Like for sure. You don't always need it, but it helps yeah. when you're learning. Did you have Mark Thurman's class? Yes, I, had Mark. I feel like we all had Mark Thurman. Round yeah. 12. I think there was, when I was in animation, there was four classes really? that had that was taught by Mark. And then there was just the one other class oh, that was right. taught by another teacher yeah. somehow. Um, I feel like Mark yeah. Thurman's pretty good. I like him a lot. Yeah, I do like him a lot. It's like he's been teaching for over 20 years at yeah. our school. So he's, he's like a dictionary, living yeah. dictionary of life drawing. Basically. Exactly. He knows all there is to life. Yeah. You ask him a bone, he'll name every single bone in the yeah. body, every single muscle in the body. Yeah. That he still collects them from yeah, road he kills. Yeah, he it. Yeah, he literally <laughs> finds bones on the street. Yep. And then takes it back home, and he has like a collection of like insects that would eat off the. Okay, this is getting gruesome. It's <laughs> Halloween. It's all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's it's pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, he's great. Speaking of Halloween, right, is there any Halloween themed Round 13. Um, character or, or scary themed character that you really like? Um, I feel like I like some anime characters actually. Right. Um, if someone dressed up as like a Death Note, uh, Death Note, yeah, yeah, like those, yeah, classic. Uh, I forgot. The, what they call it um, but like those uh, it's like those deity figures from Death Note I see like that would be pretty cool yeah um, definitely I feel like nowadays anime has such a huge inspiration on almost like every art student there we go yeah. speaking of the devil well yeah, I guess maybe we'll answer like this it, question but... a little bit as well right because yeah. I think a lot of people tend to have this debate on right on uh, the animation 
industry in the North America, whether they accept anime or not. I think in the industry, definitely a yes. Round sure. fourteen. Um, yeah. Just for the portfolio, don't do it. Yeah. But like, honestly, like animation still. Animation, like anime, is still also animation. Anything has story, it has character, just the style, right? There's nothing wrong with it, particularly. Yeah. Right? So. Well, I would say, you know, definitely look up whether, you know, the school you're trying to apply to、uh, tend to go with that style or not, right?、For、Because,、sure. you know, art is subjective at the end of the day. I mean, you can evaluate skill set and experience, but Anime style versus you know Western style. I don't think there is a good or bad on each side, right? Yeah,、exactly. they tend to have their their own advantage and disadvantage.、Um, but if you are applying to a school, that's another story, right? Right. Every school has their own preference.、Uh, every school has their own requirements. Round fifteen. Specific requirements. So. Our suggestion is that you know, try your best to stick to the rules and、uh, think about what kind of style they prefer. Exactly.、Yeah. Because you're you're still trying to please those professors、yeah. from the school. I feel like once you retire, I feel like that's when you actually can work on the stuff without any expectations or any, you know, you, you have full freedom. Yeah. So maybe, even like, maybe fourth year. Yeah, yeah, maybe fourth year. But like even fourth year, you're still kind of following、yeah. a pipeline. Yeah. You're still, and you're still following like. Yeah, but it's alright. This is life. Life is rules, right? But、yeah. you just have to find a way to break them sometimes, and、yeah. then. I'm sure they will change. Someday in the future, and, hopefully, you know,、yeah. things always change, right? Round sixteen. Oh, okay.、Uh, it looks like I can flip it. I can flip the. This is what we do. We save paper. Yep. Eco-friendly, guys. The back side of your newsprint is useful. Okay, this is gonna be a thirty second. Oops. Okay. Sorry. Got a werewolf taking a selfie. Yes. Classic peace signs. There we go. Thirty seconds. Round seventeen. Oh, and he's dead now. Classic. I think there's a bit of a. Like almost religious、bullets. feeling pose. Oh right, yeah. Right. Very dramatic. For sure. Round eighteen. Yeah, I mean, there should be plenty. Ah,、uh, Conte! Oh my God! Oh, this is.、Uh, I've been I've been gripping the the pen for like with the other grip, and my fingers are just, like climbing up. Right. Every medium, every tool has its its own unique characteristic. For sure. But I think at the end of the day, I think the school suggested we use Conte for a reason. Yeah. I think 
when you use so many mediums, you come back to Conte, it just, it just feels right. Yeah. You know? It's a perfect balance between like smoothness and line quality. Round 19. You, you can do render with it as well. You can do a little bit of shading with it. I'm definitely more familiar with Conte. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Though pen is fun, right? Like yeah, pen is fun. It's, it's we we do have exercise with pens, even in, in the program as well. Right? I don't know if you, you, you guys still do it, but I remember in first year, we tried to use... I know in uh, third year, they actually oh. uh, make you do in pen. Right. Uh, we already, I think back then when I was in it, we tried it in first year to use like dip pens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dip or like, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, like I or think even Thurman like did show us a bit of dip like a bamboo test. sticks or something or chopsticks. Right. Round twenty. Mm. Okay. I feel like everything is coming together now. Yeah. yeah. So, warm up really important. For sure. Wait, didn't Sheridan? Oh, I thought. What in the past did they make you draw in like a in a gym like when you had to take the exam? Because I know sometimes art schools make you do it in person, like right. The, they grade uh, it in person. I, uh, Maybe in China. From, they from my experience, they they didn't have to do uh, okay. any physical tests in Sheridan. But I do know in China you have to really take an actual test. In some schools here, I think there's also similar things. Right. Yeah. But I think the majority of the difference is now between my time in Sheridan animation compared to yours is we had to do everything in traditional. Oh right. I feel right. like you learned a lot more though, like using traditional. Like I always wanted to know how traditional animation worked. Right. But like I we never got to learn it. Okay, I think that concludes all the pose Great. for today. Um yeah. Well, thank you, Glenn. Biggest thanks Thank to our so model. Much. That was great. Thank yeah, you. for giving us such wonderful poses today. And thank you, Gary, for coming. Yeah, and it's my pleasure. Thank you for having To draw me. as a guest for the first time. Yes. Right? Hopefully, we can keep this as a tradition yes, that'd be down great. the line. Yeah. yeah. And we'll definitely try to invite you back in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that concludes today's live drawing session uh, if you're new to Aureo Studios you know feel free to follow us you know definitely follow us and check out some of the other videos we had in the channel and don't forget we have another live streaming session open session for everyone to draw tomorrow Saturday um, starting 6 p.m. and uh, yeah we'll be doing giveaways of these three prints okay they're all from Gary luckily Fantastic prints. So maybe we can sign it. Uh, if we, we have a sharpie, on yeah. The back on, or front? I think the front on works. The front here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. Do you have a sharpie? Yeah. Let me see if Unless I can these grab pen one. Work out. This pen might work actually. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you prefer. Yeah. Oh wow. This is this is more stressful than the life drawing. That's okay. I mean, it's it, as long as it's from you, it's meaningful, right? Yeah, so we'll Hopefully be it doesn't work. yeah we'll be selecting three lucky winners. If you submit your drawing, uh, post your drawing on Instagram and tag us. Uh, make, yeah. Watch out! Don't let it rub. Yeah. Might, oh. Probably have to let it dry. A bit. Let it dry a little bit. Like yeah. So tag us with your post of your drawing and mention us and hashtag Aureo Studios. Okay. We'll we'll put post a actual post for the details yeah but definitely tune in tomorrow for another drawing session no demos tomorrow though yeah. okay uh yeah again thank you no, gary thank you for having me yeah. yeah hope everyone had a oh, great yeah. day and once so, again thank you so much for the modeling it was great <laughs> yeah all right that's it for everyone thank right. you and then we'll see you again in the future yeah thank you take care bye bye, -bye.
Sorry. I don't know, it's alright, no worries. No worries.